Marhaba, and welcome to the Matrix Green Pill, where real people connect. Hello, and welcome to the Matrix Green Pill podcast. I am Hilmari Hutchison, CEO of Matrix Public Relations, and today I'm joined by my lovely co host, Shireen Zemo. Welcome, Shireen. Hiya, thank you, Hilmari. Today we are very excited to introduce you to Jennifer Salt, who has a great story to share with all of us. So, Jen is actually the founder of Thrift for Good, which is a social enterprise with the vision of zero waste, where secondhand items get repurposed and sold for good. That is definitely a fantastic cause. Today we'll take a deep dive into how Jen got started what has driven her success, and other interesting insights our listeners will enjoy hearing about. Jen, welcome and thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you so much for having me, guys. I'm really excited to dive in. Fantastic. So we already know a little bit about you, but I'm sure our listeners would love to get to know you a bit better. So can you please share with us the backstory about what brought you to where you are today? Absolutely. So I've been lucky. I'm Canadian and I've been lucky to be exposed to charitable causes since I was a kid. I was inspired by some friends who had relatives in the Philippines who needed money to be able to go to school and, and stories around this. So in high school, as early as that age, we banded together and started a charity. Um, and I think that was very influential in my life because I went on to study nonprofit leadership in school and volunteer in Canada overseas and kind of stumbled into this really amazing charitable career, fundraising and admin work. Um, most recently in Dubai, I was working for a fantastic nonprofit organization called Golf for Good. I was the operations manager there for almost three years. And so often we'd have people call in asking us if they could donate their items or if they could volunteer their time. Right. And Golf for Good, we fundraised for children's projects overseas, but we didn't have the capacity to do that through secondhand sales. But it was really inspiring that this is a huge gap in Dubai. And, and I know me, like so many people out there, I love thrifting. And I was disappointed you can't find that in a wide scale in Dubai. So mm -hmm. I think that journey's led me to combine my passion for the environment and, and fundraising for kids and, um, and, of course, shopping secondhand to, to now start Thrift for Good. Fantastic. Now, you've been involved with um, charities for more than 14 years, right? Yes, that's correct. So what do you think you hope to achieve with Thrift for Good? Um, so it's one of the first social enterprises in the UAE, which is very exciting. And there's not many charitable thrift shops that exist yet, at least not on a mm -hmm. wide accessible scale. Um, yeah. So of course, our mission is twofold. One is to reduce waste, uh, we're completely zero waste in what we do. And, uh, and of course, the other side of that goal is to raise as much money for children's charity projects as we can, um, which, of course, is an argument for the best way to possibly help the environment in time as well. Yeah. Um, our, our secondary goals, we're also building a culture of volunteerism and giving back in Dubai. Um, and it's a great way for us to do awareness building in terms of environmental causes and the small things we can do in our day to day to make a difference. Of Excellent. course. Yeah. What yeah. challenges have you faced in the initial stages of setting up Thrift for Good? That is a great question. Um, so <laughs> I went into Thrift for Good without really having any savings behind me, which was a bold choice. Wow. So, yes. <laughs> yeah. And we're still, <laughs> still finding that like it's, we're growing very organically. We're giving as much of our profits as we can to charity, at least 50% of the revenues that have come in. Um, but it is a challenge to be able to, even just the expenses like gas and, um, volunteer pizza and you know those kind of things to keep it very very minimal we're doing a great job of mm -hmm. that we haven't paid any salaries yet but I'm so excited for us to keep growing and become something very sustainable and also very significant in the region um, but yeah it's been a, it's been a challenge but thankfully we've had huge community supporters to sponsor our costs and, and people who are willing to volunteer to bring those costs down as well that's great to hear it, yeah. Um, actually, speaking of, you know, people that you work with, how did you guys decide on which brands or organizations you wanted to partner up with? Yeah, well, I'm very much in the belief that anybody, any organization has something to give. Um, so if it's companies, most likely we can send volunteers, do corporate drives, 
um, donate items, sponsoring kind. There's so many different things. We haven't been in a position yet where we needed to say no to someone, but I think we probably would if the way that they're raising the money, their own revenues is something that's contrary to our mission. So if it was something that was abusing people or planet, then we would probably be inclined to say no. Um, yeah. But other than that, I think every yeah. organization, there's a way for them to get involved. That makes sense. Yeah. That's awesome. mm-hmm. um, so you're a fairly new organization, like you said, um, and, you know, this year was a really tough year for a lot of us, <laughs> obviously, with COVID-19. Um, would you say it was harder to achieve your goals because of COVID? Or was that really not something that caused you any trouble? Oh, it's been one crazy year. So we just registered in February. And, of course, the lockdown hit in March, April. Wow. Um, yeah. yeah. Yeah, <laughs> I wouldn't say it, it stopped us from our, achieving our goals, but we definitely had to pivot 180 degrees. Um, the original business plan, we were focusing on distribution to resellers uh, and markets and events. And all of a sudden, so early in, we couldn't do that. So we switched to building an online community and an online store, and was, which has actually been really, really good in its own right in that... Um, It's how we've called forward community supporters. And we're building this fantastic audience online that I think is going to help. And also serving the community directly. I think there's a lot more bandwidth to educate and and to create something really unique here. So an online store wasn't part of your original plan? Not for another year or two in. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah, So like you say, everybody's had to really change and pivot (laughs) really quickly to get online. Yes. Yes. It worked out for us. I mean, a lot of people... The negative side of it, too, is so many people are leaving Dubai, they're donating a lot of items, they're looking for cheaper, excuse me, cheaper solutions. So in some strange ways, it's a really good opportunity to build this now. Um, Obviously, we'd rather do it without COVID in the picture, but it's... uh, Yeah, of course. Yeah, sure. We've been able to adapt. (laughs) So staying on the subject of uh, COVID-19, what has been your business mantra and how have you kept your stakeholders motivated during this time? Yeah. So for us, it's really mission focused. It's the environment and it's kids around the world. And um, unfortunately, with COVID, one of the biggest effects that's happening is charity projects have lost funding. A lot of companies are cutting back their sponsorship. Uh, a lot of people are saving their money instead of donating. Right. So it's now, this, this is needed now more than ever. Um, and especially at companies in the UAE, you'll see there's much more plastic, disposable masks. It's, so I think mindfulness on the environment and, and raising money for kids, it's needed now, nor, uh, sorry, more now than ever. And I think that's really the call to action that's keeping our community involved and engaged and inspired and motivated. Um, yeah, Very that's, good. yeah, that's really great. Um, so after reviewing the media kit that you've sent me over, I noticed that right now the majority audience that you have are Western expats. Um, do you think that secondhand culture in the UAE is behind in comparison to other countries? And why do you think that is? That's a really great, great question. And I spent some time thinking about this because it is a hard one to answer. I think it's in part because there hasn't been a great supply yet in Dubai Mm -hmm. and the UAE. So, and I do really believe build it and they will come like secondhand. It's to me, I mean, I'm obviously very biased, but it's the superior choice in terms of cost. You don't need to compromise quality. Um, And I I believe that everything other than food kind of already exists on the planet that we need. Um, There is, in Western cultures, people are more used to it. It's such a successful model internationally, but it just hasn't Mm -hmm. really existed in Dubai. And I think the mentality of of buying firsthand and the commercialism in Dubai and maybe the transients that people are are leaving, it's, yeah, it's coming. I think it's coming in a very big way in Dubai. Um, Yeah. And it's just something that with presence and awareness and building that up, I think we will get to the point where there is no more stigma around secondhand. Um, Yeah, for sure. That does exist a little bit, a little bit today, perhaps with non-Western cultures. Yeah, but it's like you said, you know, you got to start somewhere. So someone's got to be the first. So um, you guys are one of the few that have already pushed people in the community here to go in that direction. So 
hopefully yes, education. more people join. Yeah. Um, also, you. I've noticed. <laughs> yeah. Um, so I've also noticed that you have a lot more women's items on your website. Are men mm -hmm. not really involved with donating? Um, what do you That's think? That's a really that? interesting question. Yeah. And I, I hate to jump into stereotypes. Um, so I think part of it, it's a few reasons. Part of it is because we're mostly a woman-led group and I think our marketing is more strongly towards women. So we just, we've attracted more female donors. Mm -hmm. um, but that said, we're working really, really hard on building up men's collection because about almost half of the people that land on our website are men. We need to provide this. We do. Sure. Um, consider this a call out for more men's donations. <laughs> interestingly, <you got. laughs> yeah, yeah, we need them. We really do. And interestingly enough, when we receive those items in, I think there's a difference in terms of how men and women use their stuff in general. This is just a generalization. But we get fewer men's donations. And when they come to us, usually they're pretty well end of life, you know? Right. So. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Maybe that's because men have a really hard time giving away their items because they love them so much. They use them so much. So <laughs> by the time you guys get them, there's not much left of them. Exactly. So they're great for upcycling and those things. But uh, yeah, we, we don't have a decent enough collection of men's stuff yet. But we are very actively working on that. <laughs> I'm sure that many of our listeners will want to know more about donating to Thrift for Good. So for those who are interested in supporting this cause, do you accept any items donated or do you have certain standards and regulations in place? So we will get to the stage where we accept anything and everything as we're still pretty new and as we're still building up storage is a bit of an issue. So with that, we've just limited ourselves to fashion, to clothing, fashion accessories, shoes, bags, belts, scarves, you name it. Um, but we will get into house items and, and maybe even furniture and things one day. We're not there yet. Okay. Um, but we do accept all quality, all levels, all brands. If it's something that isn't sellable, um, but is useful, we will donate it on where it's very, very needed. Or if it's something that's damaged, stained heavily, can't be sold, can't be given away, then we upcycle it into new products and sell it that way. Um, so oh, don't wow. be shy. Don't throw things out. We will take it. It, yeah, we don't want those landfills being filled with. You guys really put to everything to use. Yes. Yeah. Everything to use. Yeah. That's awesome. Um, could you tell us the step-by-step -step process, like from the moment the item gets donated to you, like what does it need to go through before it gets sold? Yeah. So we have lots of different channels with thanks to volunteers. I love volunteers. Um, so every Monday we collect. So you literally put your items outside your door. We throw it into the van. A couple, we let it cool down because of COVID for a couple of days and we sort it out with a small group of volunteers. Um, and from there, we'll decide what we're going to be selling at pop-ups online um, or soon at our retail space, which is very exciting. Okay. Um, and those products <laughs> go to the laundry. We have a lovely sponsor, Amazus Laundry, who sponsors that for us. And those products will give our pop-ups first priority. So the products go there first. What doesn't sell at pop-up, we then photograph catalog list online store and pack and then it gets delivered to the customers um, things that are a tier down from that because we only put 100 quality we only offer that to the customers so if it's a tier down from that we'll clear it at flea markets or um, in bulk uh, yeah like that and if it's or if we get a request from the community for donations, we'll prioritize that. Oftentimes, a lot of our kids' clothes and kids' toys are donated instead of sold. Um, mm -hmm. yes, there's big needs for that. So you have yeah. a definite system yeah. that you follow for each item that comes in. Oh, yeah, yeah. Come to one of our sorting days. We'll pull out our big nerdy flow chart on a whiteboard. And <laughs> <laughs> <hang> up. <laughs> That's the only way to do it. <laughs> yeah but we make sure not to throw anything out that's that's the basic premise because everything that that's comes the bottom out line yeah used. yeah there do you want to tell our listeners maybe about the the pop-up store that you were talking about uh what's happening with that absolutely so every single month we do a pop-up uh we partner with different coffee shops and restaurants so we have on september 23rd and 24th a pop-up at bounty beats in the meridian uh, mina mm -hmm. Siahi, for example and uh, we'll oftentimes invite influencers and it's, it's a great event for people to come together, shop secondhand fashion and just have a lot of fun while raising money. That sounds okay. excellent. Yeah. Now let's change gears just for a bit and talk about the volunteers who support Thrift for Good. Do you get a lot of volunteers and how would someone go about becoming a volunteer? Yes. Yeah, so we 
do have a lot of volunteers. We are a volunteer run organization. We couldn't do anything without them. We're about 20 plus people who are involved on a day to day basis, making it all happen. Um, so we've got like one off volunteers. We have a WhatsApp group you can join just to learn about, okay, we need people for a flea market or a pop up come join us for a day. Or you can email me your CV and availability, jen at thriftforgood.org, if you're interested in being more involved on a daily basis. And because we're volunteer run, we need, we need everything. Excellent. So whatever skills and expertise you have, I can guarantee that we can, we can pull you in and involve you in some yeah. way or another. Do you want to yeah. share and your, your WhatsApp number with the audience? Oh, uh, that is good. So we've got a link on our website. If you navigate to uh, thriftforgood.org and then volunteers, You'll see both my email and also the link to the WhatsApp group where we post all of our opportunities. Lovely. Thank you. Yes, of course. Thank you. So your organization is still new, which is, mm -hmm. it's been a tough year, you know, um, but what would you say has been a great accompl accomplishment that you've already achieved so far? So I think the rate of growth is something really inspiring and yeah, I'm, I'm so excited because I think Thrift for Good will still soon be something very iconic and significant in the region. Um, we, like I said, our funds raised so far still very modest, but at least 50% of what we're raising each month is going to charity. So I know very soon that number is going to be hopefully outrageously big. Um, so, so far we've donated almost 25000 to go for good. Wow, we've fantastic. Wow. Trees to offset our carbon emissions. Um, we have over 200 donors in Dubai who are giving their stuff, uh, almost 400 orders online. And again, I think it's the rate of growth since April, which was pretty much no revenues. We've been doubling every single month. And I think that momentum will keep growing. That's brilliant, especially considering the, the pandemic we, we are in right now. Brilliant. Yes. Yeah. Now, with the current climate change and overall global warming issues and concerns, what advice can you give to our, our listeners? Um, some practical ways for them to start to make a change towards a more sustainable future? Absolutely. Um, so I like what Schumacher says. Uh, he's the author of Small is Beautiful. Um, and he says, start with our inner house, which I couldn't agree with more on its many, many levels. Um, I believe it's all about the little things we do as individuals that make a difference. Sure. So environmentally, the most important choices are small habits like refusing disposables, cutting down on meat, cutting down on electricity, offsetting carbon emissions, which is actually really simple to do. Um, yeah. Or perhaps most importantly, shopping mindfully. Um, our dollar is our vote, and when we shop, we help build empires that set precedent in terms of accepted practices. Um, and that's why I'm so proud to be part of Thrift for Good, because when you spend your money with us, it's environmentally friendly, it helps kids, it's good through and through to its root. And I think so many more companies can operate that way. Excellent, yeah, true. Yeah, for sure. Uh, um, maybe going in a little bit of a different direction, um, you know, we all go through some sort of mistakes in life. Um, would you say you had one mistake that you've gone through um, that you would have, you know, you've learned for, from, but you would be more cautious about if you had another chance to repeat it? Yeah. Um, so, yeah, we're learning every day. We're getting better every day. And I'd say, like, it, there's been little important things on our learning curve that we're constantly working on and improving. For example, when we started, we didn't have any in-house expertise on authentic authenticating products. So mm -hmm. we did make a couple of mistakes there. But now I'm, I can say that we feel very confident when we offer a branded product that it's authentic or we just leave it off and, and clear it at the flea market, you know? Um, oh, yeah. So things like that or getting our storage right and we've lost some products. And, and just it's like little things just making it so we improve and get to 100% awesomeness. Right which is a slow, <laughs> a slow process sometimes. <laughs> but that's the way okay. to learn, right? If, if yeah. You make, as long as, mistakes are okay as long as you learn from them. Exactly. exactly. So one question I love to ask, um, what is the one thing that you do on a daily basis, regardless of how busy you are? Yeah. Um, so I, I love food <laughs> in a way that transcends ba basic self-care. Who self doesn't? <laughs> <laughs> I love food. <laughs> So that's, that's something I make time for every day is a good meal and good sleep. And I think that's what 
it's just so important for being able to do what you want to do in a day and accomplish great things, right? Lovely. Yeah. I can't yeah. really imagine getting much done without having my eight hours of sleep or my seven hours of sleep. I feel like mm -hmm. it's very underrated um, yeah. a lot sleep of the times. It's very important. Agreed. Yeah. I'm one of those people who's a little bit grumpy if I don't eat or sleep. So I don't want to subject anybody to that. So <laughs> I just make sure to get that done. <laughs> Hilary, didn't you mention to me some time before that you only recently found out how important sleep actually is? Yeah, when I was younger, I never gave much thought to sleep or how much I needed to sleep. And I would always burn the candle on both ends for many years. And I've recently learned how vital sleep is for our health. So now it's a priority for me, which it wasn't before, for sure. Lovely. And it's so yeah. enjoyable. <laughs> of course. <laughs> Um, so one more question. Um, could you tell us one of your proudest moments during your personal journey till now? Yeah. Um, so I'd say one of the things, one of the moments where I've been most proud, uh, yeah, I think Thrift for Good, it's, it's my baby. It's my heart and soul. So it, it does apply in the context of Thrift for Good too. Um, yeah. I'm currently in Canada for a family emergency. And I think my oh. proudest moment was coming to the realization I had to leave. But that there's enough amazing volunteers in Thrift for Good that I could leave. And Thrift for Good is not only running, it's growing. So as a proud mama, it was, it was a realization that Thrift for Good is now greater than myself. And I really believe with all this momentum, we're unstoppable. And we have all the potential to grow really quickly into something very significant. That's lovely. Yeah. Where do you think you see Thrift for Good in the next, let's say, five years? Yeah. So I think it will be, you will find a Thrift for Good store in a few locations in Dubai. And I think we'll be able to raise hundreds of thousands every year, if not more, for charity projects. I think it's something, it, it can be the thrift store in Dubai and, and beyond, hopefully. That's my vision for it. Yeah, I mean, I, I can really see that happening. I think that it's going to pick up um, thrifting. It's going to pick up, especially now where people start to realize how important it is to be more cautious of the, you know, the environment. And, and yeah. we'll be rooting for you. Thank you. I need that. We need that. <laughs> <laughs> So now we have come to this part of the segment of our show where we will each ask you a couple of rapid fire questions, which just basically means we're going to give you a really easy to answer question. You just give us whatever the first thing that comes to mind. All right. I'm, I feel like I'm on a game show now. I'm ready. I'm ready. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. So obviously, since you work with fashion, t-shirts or tank tops? Mmm, t-shirt for me, please. Uh, favorite holiday destination? Nepal. Ooh, okay. Favorite food to snack on? Oh, there's so many options. Um, I like popcorn. I'm a fan of popcorn. Okay, nice. this one is a little harder. Maybe it'll take you a little longer to answer. Who inspires you and why? Uh, yeah, so there's two people I can instantly think of. One, have you guys heard of Marie Kondo? She's a Japanese yes. organizing guru. Of course. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Doesn't she have a whole show on Netflix? She does, yes, and a great oh, book. Yes. And, um, but I love her philosophy, essentially, that the stuff we own should bring us joy. And it brings mm -hmm. like this quiet wisdom to what we have and um, living modestly with, without really needing too much. So uh, she inspires me, definitely. Um, and the other would be, it's pretty cheesy, but uh, when I was young, the founders of the organization that I first started fundraising for, they committed their lives to helping out in the Philippines and they've seen such amazing, wonderful change. So it's, it's that dedication and commitment and contribution that I really, really value. Wow, some excellent wow. examples. Lovely. Thank you for sharing and thank you for playing along. Yeah, of course. <laughs> I don't yeah. know if it was an instant rapid fire response, but. <laughs> <laughs> no, you did very well. So before we wrap up, we would like uh, to do our green pull moment. The long awaited. So, the long awaited <laughs> green pull moment. So could you share an inspiring or life changing experience that you've gone through uh, your green pull moment? Absolutely. Um, so in the journey of Thrift for Good, I think we've touched on a couple of things already. The volunteers who are just incredibly inspiring and make it all happen. The community of donors and volunteers and customers that we couldn't do anything without. So that's, that's part of it. Um, 
And I think also the contentment of living modestly. If I had to choose a single green pill moment, I'd say uh, it's probably how easy it is as a business to really be zero waste when you make it a priority. Um, so I expected more challenges in terms of sourcing green products and finding people to upcycle things. But to be honest, it's shown me that there's really no more excuse for apathy. So every company can cut back on unsustainable packaging. It, offsetting carbon emissions is as easy as planting trees. Um, and it's so easy to modify processes which harm people and planet. So I think that's been kind of my awakening in this is that it's our responsibility to insist, to really insist that uh, companies change their practices. And we do that through who we support. That's wow. fantastic. Yeah. And something for us all to consider and, and make those changes. As you say, they're not as difficult as we, we imagined them to be. Exactly. So lovely. I think it costs a dollar to plant a tree. It's just outrageously easy. I had, I think last year for, I, I'm not sure what it was. It was a, an anniversary or something. And uh, a friend of mine sent me a, a gift certificate of a, of a tree she planted um, in my name. So that was oh, lovely. beautiful. Yeah. Um, beautiful. So in I'm those sure ways. The, yeah. I'm sure the one she chose is more than a dollar by the way <laughs> i bet i bet it was but it's lovely that the way we can we can each contribute in in different ways for the Absolutely. sustainability of the planet i'd even go as far as to say that even though covid has made this year incredibly difficult for everyone i think it's also shown a lot of companies that you know you can implement changes and still be able to continue working the same way, you know, with working from home, you know, a lot of companies didn't think that it would be possible to get the same productivity. So now with this, with being more environmentally friendly, it's something that they can take into consideration. Yeah, true. Yeah, especially and, making yeah, it a priority. I think that's the first step. Absolutely. Yeah. So thank you so much for sharing your fantastic and inspiring story with us today. I'm sure our audience will thoroughly enjoy this conversation. Mm. But before as, we say goodbye. As we did. As we did. Yes, absolutely. Yes. <laughs> Could you please tell our listeners where they can find and follow you. Absolutely. Um, so you can find us at thrift, T-H-R-I-F-T, for good.org. We're on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, LinkedIn as Thrift for Good. And soon you'll be able to find us in our brand new retail space on the Palm, Jumeirah and Golden Mile Gallery. It's the first one. And we are so excited. It's going to be really, really spectacular. So come and come and say hi. It sounds excellent. We'll also put the, um, these links in the show notes as well. So thank you again for joining us today. We wish thank you, you so and, much and thrift for good. All the very best. Thank you guys so much for having me. And thank you for doing this initiative. It's my pleasure to be involved. Lovely. Thank you very much. If you enjoy our conversations, please like and subscribe. See you next Wednesday.